Hi and welcome back to Normski TV and another Transfer Daily and looking at all things Arsenal with regards to the incoming and outgoing rumours and yes we're looking at some rumours today um, yesterday um, first of all um, Chris Wheatley um, tweeted out um, the fact that we've been linked um, with James Madison from Leicester now you know how true this is I don't know but James Madison very good attacking midfielder um, you know uh, had a kind of in and out season for Leicester but still a quality player um, a number 10 something that we've been looking for for a long time um, you know we had Martin Odegaard that came in in the January transfer on a loan deal um, but he's now gone back to Real Madrid and the likelihood is that you know he's looking to um, sort of try and make his mark at Real Madrid they're probably gonna try and extend his deal now if they do um, happen to let Odegaard go he's gonna be going for around about 50 million now my question to you is would um, you um, go for an Odegaard against someone like James Madison, who knows the Premier League, can score goals, quality player. You know, the guy is absolutely quality. And he's a great asset for Leicester, but Leicester are known for, you know, um, getting rid of their players. AFC Bell today tweeted out again. Now, when AFC Bell tweets, you have to listen. You have to listen because they tweeted out um, last season um, when Thomas Partey, um, was coming to Arsenal, they tweeted out that Thomas Partey release, release clause was met. And it was like, you sure? They called it and it happened. So we have to take note, we have to listen. Our ears are going to be pricked up when it comes to when a AFC Bell, um, you know, um, tweet about this. Now, they say we're interested. That's about it. Doesn't mean to say, I know Arteta likes the player, he's a good player, but can we afford him? You know, you're probably talking about 50 million plus. But if you had a choice, please put it in the comments. If you had a choice between James Madison and Martin Odegaard, who would you go for? Um, would you spend 50 million on Odegaard? Okay, yes, he's had half a season in the Premier League. He's okay for us. But I just feel that James Madison gives us more in terms of quality and in terms of scoring goals. That guy can score goals. And Leicester are known for letting go of their, you know, quality players. Um, you've only got to look look at like Harry Maguire. Yes, Harry Maguire. You know, Kante, Mares. You know, number of players that they have let go. Uh, but they always seem to um, find a player to replace them with. Is there a chance that Leicester could let go of James Madison? I'm also hearing rumours that He's not seen eye to eye with Brendan Rodgers. Could that be something positive for Arsenal? It is a lot of money. Will Arsenal be able to kind of stump up that kind of money? The thing is, is that how much money have Arsenal got in terms of transfers? You know what I mean? You know, we're linked also again with um, Ben White. Um, it's being talked about today. Um, a bid has been rejected uh, for 40 million. Um, and this Brighton have rejected it. They feel that he should, um, he's, he's worth more. And um, Ben White wants to come to Arsenal, um, but whether it's going to happen is another thing. I mean, you know, will Arsenal stump up that kind of money again, or will it be something where they play, they pay in in instalments? Um, he's a good player. He's obviously in the England side as well. Um, he hasn't sort of made an appearance for England yet, but I'm sure when he does, you know, his value could go, go through the scene if he does really play well for them. So for my thing is this, you know, Ben White, um, Arsenal have apparently put in a bid um, for £50 million, pounds and um, £40 million, pounds, should I say, but it has been rejected by Brighton. Um, so again, we're going to have to wait and see what happens concerning that um obviously with him as a possibility coming to arsenal what does that mean for william saliba he's coming back on loan 
Will he be given a chance in Arsenal um, to cut his teeth? I hope so, because he has not kicked a ball in anger for Arsenal when it comes to the Premier League or any of the competitions that we've been in. So we really do want to see William Saliba. We want to get young players in, build for the future. I believe that William Saliba can do a job with Arsenal. You know, if Ben White comes, then what a combination. You know what I mean? He's a right-footed um, defender. You know, what does that mean for Rob Holding? Um, you know what I mean? You know, for me personally speaking, I would try and get rid of Rob Holding. There was a number of um, clubs interested in last season, um, but for whatever reason, we didn't let him go. So Ben White, a bid has been rejected uh, for £40 million. Pounds and, you know, the situation is, is Arsenal are in talks and are, are interested and there's a chance that they may go back in with a, 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 an improved offer. What that will be, we, are, we will only have to just wait and see what um, when that happens. Um, so there you have it. Um, <clears throat> so we've, we've got um, James Madison, we're linked with. Um, AFC Bell have retweeted this out. And obviously we've had a bid rejected uh, for Ben White, the Brighton defender. Um, just looking at some other um, stuff here. Uh, Obviously, you might as well forget it, Arsenal, because we can't offer him that. Um, you know, they're talking 30 odd million pounds, but I think Arsenal could probably go for somebody a bit cheaper rather than Sanderberg. I think there are other options out there that he could go for. And, and you know, obviously, Eves Basuma is there, you know, he, you know, someone that Arsenal are, are, are looking at from Brighton. Still no news on that. We'll just have to just wait and see concerning that so that's with Sanderberg now um let's just quickly look again um here we have it right yeah um Ramsdale link uh apparently we've been linked with um Sheffield United's goalkeeper Ramsdale in the sun he goes Arsenal have been linked with a surprise move for Sheffield United's goalkeeper Aaron Ramsdale and according to the Sun the Gunners could turn to Ramsdale as they look to strengthen their goalkeeping department obviously Leno's future is uncertain at the moment um, we linked with um, Andre Onana who's currently on a ban but you know he's going for around about 7 million is it something that we could possibly go for um, you know um, really I don't want to see Ronison you know um, in anywhere near the first team um, if Leno decides that he wants to leave, would Ramsdale be the one to maybe come in? I know if we do go for um, um, Andre Anana, he's not going to want to sit on the bench when he does come. And so would it be a case of, you know, if Leno goes and we happen to get Aaron Ramsdale, would he sort of cover that, that, that period of time, um, you know, if um, Anana comes to Arsenal and we'll start playing, I think it's November um, of this year that he will start playing. So we'll have to again watch this space. But the Sun, as I said, um, are saying that the Gunners have, uh, you know, turned their attention to, to Ramsdale. And, um, you know, the Sheffield Knight, who now, you know, back in the Championship, said they want around 20 million for the goalkeeper, um, who's recently been called up to England, replacing the injured Dean Anderson in the Euro 2020 squad. Will we see him playing? We'll have to just wait and see. But at the moment, Dean Anderson looks like he's one of them. Um, well, he's one of the guys. I think he'd probably be third behind him because you've you, you, you've got um, the goalkeeper, the Everton goalkeeper that's there. Um, you know, between the sticks. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll have to just um, wait and see um, concerning that. Um, now, interesting one here, <laughs> and this is Smith Rowe. Um, Apparently, um, Aston Villa put in a bid for 25 million um, for Smith Rowe. Um, Football London are reporting, um, but the Gunners are not entertaining any any um, um, bids at all. This guy is going to be an integral part of Arsenal. Um, he's 20 years old. Has had a great season, um, scoring. I played 33 times for Arsenal and scoring five goals in all competitions. So you know we do need this guy, he's young, he's only 20 years old 
um, hoping that they can sort out this contract with him. Um, he's got I think, two years left on his contract and I think Arsenal tried to extend that um, uh, for a further five years. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But we'll, obviously, we've lost um, Benduea to Norwich and so we, we can't afford to lose another um, midfielder in, um, in um, um, Smith Row. Absolutely cannot. And I'm also hearing that Real Madrid has shown a bit of interest as well. But look, I hope that Arsenal don't fall into this trap. They need to keep the likes of Smith Rowe because he is going to be the future of Arsenal, integral part of that. We need young players. Um, unfortunately, Arteta is going to be the man trying to bring them through that period and, and try and get us back to out of obscurity to challenging again for at least top four. <laughs> so we'll wait and see on that. So if Smith Rowe, Arsenal rejected a 25 million bid from um, Aston Villa. And so we'll just, again, wait and see what happens with regards to that. Um, another one here, um, Arsenal interested in the uh, Corona deal. Arsenal interested in signing Jesus Corona from Jesus Corona, if it's from Porto, according to the Daily Mail. Um, and it says, however, Corona is reportedly being chased by Sevilla and Florentina, as well as following a really strong season in Portugal. The 28th year old contract at Porto is due to expire next summer and is respond and is reported that he has a 21.4 release clause in his current deal with the club so again we're linked with another midfielder is he a midfielder let me just see I think he is a midfielder I don't know too much about him um but yes um he yeah so he he he's a yeah midfield attacking midfielder right side of midfielder now, if I say someone like William, if William leaves, which I hope he does, then is he somebody that could come in? Will Arsenal play, pay that release clause of 21.4 million? Again, we have to wait and see. We're going to have competition, as I said, from Sevilla and Florentina. Uh, and uh, I know they've, they've got European competition, whereas Arsenal can't offer that at the moment. But we really do need to, you know, um, get our midfield sorted out and get the numbers back in. Obviously, we've got to get rid of players. At the moment, Granit Xhaka, I don't know what's happening with that. Everything's got a little bit quiet on there, but I'm sure some deal will be struck at some point. Just a little bit on Corona. He's, he, um, he, um, he's a right winger or right back, enjoyed his impressive season with Porto last term, scoring three goals and pro providing 13 assists in 48 appearances in all competition. And he's attracting, as I said, major interests across Europe. So, again, that's another player that Arsenal are linked with. We are linked with every, as I said, every Tom, Dick and Harry. Now, um, the Arsenal target, Akin, I can't say his name, Kala Nogulu, is... Um, Obviously, lost today. Uh, they played Wales and lost 2-0. You know, again, we're linked with him. Um, apparently, um, he's going to be a free agent um, very soon. And it's been linked with the Gunners and Chelsea. He's 28. I think he's 28 years old. And, uh, yeah, um, there's a chance that, um, you know, he could come on a free. Again, Arsenal have been linked with him and... You know, as long as these Euros are, Euros are going on at the moment, we're just going to have to wait and see. Um, Mavroponis, it looks like he's set to leave Arsenal. Um, you know, he's close to completing a £7 million permanent move to Stuttgart. Again, this is reported by Football London. And Mavroponis has made, um, he's just made just seven Premier League appearances for the Gunners since he joined under Wenger in 2018. Um, a source has also confirmed um, that Arsenal of table, as I said, this is in response to that. I'm going back to the the, the, um, the Ben White thing. So this is all sort of part of the same article that we've, we've, we've put in a bid for 40 million and obviously we rejected it. But with the Man of Mavroponis thing, it looks like he's gonna leave and we'll be getting something like seven million. He did have a good season when he was on loan. Um, and I said, if we are going for Ben White, then it looks like he's going to be right down the pecking order. 
Um, so, you know, we're going to wait and see concerning that deal. As I said, because the Euros are going on, things are not going to really take off yet until, you know, probably mid-July when the actual Euros are finished. But um, I think that's it. Just one last thing. I'm just going to bring you one more last thing. And that is um, the Unai... Uh, El Nene, let's find that. Let's find that. I saw that there just popped up. El Nene, uh, Contra Arsenal are set to carry on contract negotiations with um, El Nene before the new season. Um, Football London has learned. Talks between the Gunners and El Nene came to a temporary halt in April, but they are set to resume once again this summer with Edu looking to protect the value of the midfielder with just 12 months remaining on the existing deal. Now, the interesting thing here is if they are going to extend his contract they're trying to protect it. It, it maybe there's a chance that you know he's a good squad player but maybe if there's a club that's interested and going to come in for the right money if he's got an extension on his contract then maybe we can get half decent he, he had an okay season with Arsenal and we could I don't know what sort of price he would go for but um, I'm sure if we did sell him we could get around about 10 maybe 15 million for him um, so there's another potential outgoing but he could obviously stay um, and be a mainstay in Arsenal, but he would just be, uh, you know, a squad player. Um, and I think that would be really it at the moment. So other than that, there's not really any more news to report, uh, apart from just one thing, and that's the fixtures. They've just come out and uh, Arsenal have got a pretty tough start um, to life <laughs> um, in the Premier League. Um, it is a very tough start for us and uh, our first game um, away is to Brentford on the 14th of August uh, at 3 o'clock kickoff. Um, away to Brentford, newly promoted club, you know, they've got Ivan Tony, you know, banging in the goals and they, you know, it's their new stadium, it's going to be banging, you know, fans are going to be back hopefully and they're going to look to impress and I'm sure they're going to be a, be a lot tougher than when we played Fulham away. Obviously, they didn't have fans then, but they're going to probably be a harder proposition. I want to probably talk about this in another, uh, maybe what's going on podcast with Kofi and hopefully maybe try and link David, who's all the way in Dubai. And so we'll see what happens if time, his time um, span um, commits him, basically. Um, now, um, after that, we are, we've got a home game against Chelsea. Then we're going to be away to Man City. So we've got three tough games, three tough games. And the thing about it is we cannot afford to come off to a bad start. Now, we haven't got a lot of players in terms of, you know, playing in the Euros and that. So a lot of our players are going to be fresh. Um, you know, Chelsea have got a lot of uh, players playing for England. You know, they're going to be playing, you know, the, the World Cup. They're going to be playing the Super Cup. So there's going to be a lot of things that they're going to be doing. Uh, Man City obviously got a number of players um, away on international duty as well. So you never know. First three games still, it's going to be tough. We're up against Pep's side, third game of the season. And then we have a, um, a fourth game at home to Norwich City on the 11th of September and then Burnley away. I'm not going to go too much. and I will say one thing. We do have our first or second London most important derby and that will be the 25th of September um, on uh, 21, 25th of September at, at uh, 3 o'clock kickoff. 3 o'clock kickoff. Mm, okay. And that will be, I mean, unless these things change, I don't know if that's on a Saturday. I'll have to check the date, 25th of September. But we're at home against the mighty Jokers. Right, that's what it is. The mighty Jokers. Spurs. Um, we're going to be playing them. So, look, it's not going to be easy. Arsenal need to get off to a good start. We need to get the right players in this summer. Um, um, we, you know, Arteta's got to get his ideas, ideas over really quickly. Um, and uh, we need to hit the ground running. Uh, we can't afford to start dropping points and then falling behind, and then we're fighting our way through. It is vitally important that we get a good start. Uh, Bamiang, if you're still with us, you're going to have to kick the ground running, mate, and start banging in those goals. The season, last season, was absolutely down the drain. It was a wash, washed season. This season, you need to come correct. Don't know what's happening with um, Lacazette and the other strikers. 
we'll be getting any new strikers in. Again, we'll have to wait and see. It seems like our focus on right now is the midfield and defenders. Um, maybe as we progress further down into the transfer window, then we'll probably start getting linked with um, some strikers and we'll probably kind of know what's happening with Lacazette. He's only got a year left on his contract, so you never know. He could end up going somewhere else, but we have to get the right players in. So guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you're new. Please like, subscribe, share, and I will see you on the next Transfer Daily. Take care.